What's going on YouTube? My name's Alex and this is Ask the Cheese Gaming. I'm back with another review for you today. In this instance, I'll be continuing the fighting game trend and also another current gem fighter. Today, I'm going to take a look at Dead or Alive 6 or DOA 6. Developed by Team Ninja and published by Koei Tecmo Games with a worldwide release, not just North American, of March 1st, 2019. The story of Dead or Alive 6 follows directly on the heels of DOA 5. But, unlike previous games, this game's story follows various characters and their stories through parallel plot lines. So, it can get a little confusing if you try to play through it, but bear with me. It's pretty good, but yeah, I don't know. For that matter, most of the Dead or Alive stories were always a little confusing and never made a lot of sense truth be told anyway let's talk about the gameplay in this game DOA 6 brings back all of the core mechanics from previous games i don't know if you've ever played any of them but with just a new sharper and more polished look in this game just like in previous ones holds beat punches and kicks throws beat holds and hits beat throws. So there's kind of a rock, paper, scissors sort of motif to a game. Oftentimes, when you play this game, your object should be to try to sidestep or dodge your opponent's attacks and then use a short combo into a stun move or pop them up and then perform a longer, more damaging combo. A new feature in this game is actually called the Super Meter. If timed right, you can use the super meter to allow you to sidestep and dodge an opponent's attack, or if it's all the way filled, you can perform a special attack which can instantly counter anything your opponent's doing. All in all, the gameplay of Dead or Alive 6 is solid throughout, no complaints. The best area of the game has to be by far the tutorial. The tutorial in this game breaks the game down from its most simplest and base, basic baby steps, like just basic movement, if you've never played any fighter ever before, to super, super situational advanced combos and dodges and hold moves that you may only ever have to rarely do if you play the game a lot online. Better still in the tutorial, it even has what's called command or combo training for individual or rather every character. So if you figure out who you want to main, you can go in, figure out all their commands and hold moves and combo moves and everything else. It's really neat and really breaks it down quite well. No matter what your play style, the tutorial will help you find who you want to play and teach you the game. Now, if you've ever played a past Dead or Alive game, you should know that the sound design and music is pretty solid, and that's just the same in this game as well. No complaints here. Honestly, the only real bad part of Dead or Alive 6 is the stupid microtransaction of the costumes. This must just be a thing with fighters these days and trying to microtransaction us consumers with their costumes. Gah! Mortal Kombat 11 does that too. Screw you, NRS. And Tecmo, seriously? You gotta follow in the suit of NRS like that? You gotta diss us like that? Come on now. Anyway, sorry. Mini ran over. The costume grind for Dead or Alive 6 is just god-awful and brutal. Oh, it's just horrible. But, if you can get past the microtransactions and, you know, then yeah, I'd recommend playing this game. But, quick note, don't pay full price for it. You can actually find the Core Fighters version, free to play, on the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Marketplace. So, if you enjoyed the review, and you haven't already, please consider, excuse me, please consider subscribing here at Ask the Cheese Gaming. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks everybody, bye.